Hi, I'm Mihoko Shimano from NII, and this is a collaborative work between Imari Sato School and Kaonishino at Drexel. As human beings, we can easily identify whether the surface is wet or not, and guess what the surface would, like, would have looked like when it was dry. For instance, one of us recently went to a camp and it rained all through the night. When we packed up the tent in the morning, the ground looked like this. You can easily tell where the tent was, can't you? But why can you tell about the wet and dry ground? There seems to be two differences between the visual appearance of dry and wet pine needles and soil. The wet surface looks darker and more colorful, in other words, saturated. Let's look at this familiar case where you've spilled some water on a piece of cloth, barely missing your laptop. First, if we look at the intensity values of pixels along this line on this cloth, you can see that it gets significantly darker where it got wet. Next, if we look at the spectrum of two pixels, one from a dry region in this red circle and another from a wet region in this blue circle, and normalize the overall spectrum energy to focus on the spectral differences. You can see that the spectral distribution of wet surface is more concentrated about its mode, in this case, green. In other words, the spectrum is sharpened leading to an increased saturation of the surface color. These two optical phenomena of wet surfaces, darkening and spectral sharpening, are what we want to model accurately in our work. <coughs> Past work on wet surface appearance modeling mainly focused on surface darkening. For dry surfaces, its appearance is determined by light interaction with materials, particles, and air. For wet surfaces, some researchers have studied the special case when a thin film of water is formed on the surface. Lechner and Dove claim that the light being absorbed by the surface increases due to internal reflection at the film-air interface, leading to darkening of the surface appearance. But, as shown by Tume et al., the dominant cause of darkening of wet surfaces is due to the liquid absorbed by the surface itself. Jensen et al. combined these two in and on the water models to render wet surfaces. These models, however, are all fundamentally monochromatic and cannot explain the interesting spectral sharpening found in the wet surfaces. More recently, Sawayama, Edelson, and Nishida studied human perception of wet surfaces and devised image processing transformations to virtually make a surface look wet. They empirically showed that to make a dry surface look wet, it can be darkened by positively skewing the luminance histogram, and its color can be changed to have higher saturation. This image transformation showed that darkening alone is insufficient to model wet surface appearance, and spectral sharpening is essential. Our work provides a physically accurate explanation of this phenomena, which will allow us to invert this process. 
In this work, we derive a novel physically based spectral appearance model that accurately explains the two essential characteristics of wet surfaces, darkening and spectral sharpening. Then, based on our multi-spectral appearance model, we derive a method for simultaneously estimating the degree of wetness and the dry color of a surface from a single multispectral image. We show that the interaction of light scattering and absorption by the, mater by the liquid and the surface is bilinear and drive a robust method for estimating the spatial wetness and the original surface color. Let us start with the spectral appearance of a dry surface without water. Surfaces consist of particles interwoven with air that cause scattering and absorption every time a light ray hits them. These radiometric events determine the spectra of light as it travels through the surface back into the air. For example, this is color and spectral distribution after single scattering, four times, ten times scattering. As you can see, the more particles the light scatters through, the sharper the spectral distribution and the more saturated the color. Then what happens when the surface gets wet? In the case of water film on the surface, we find that the total internal reflection at the film air interface exponentially decays, leading to negligible color change. The much more dominant effect of appearance change comes from the water absorbed by the surface. The liquid basically represses the air between the particles which increases the path length of light that travels through the subsurface. This in turn increases the amount of light that experiences any time scattering before coming out from the surface. Here we see the energy of multiple scattering, say 10 times scattering, significantly increased compared with that of the dry surfaces. But why does the path length get longer? Let's look at an example of light path length in a dry sponge. As the surface becomes wet, more wet, there is increased forward scattering. As a result, the overall light path length becomes longer. When the surface gets wet, the medium between its particles will be filled with the liquid. And generally, the liquid will absorb light more than air. For water, as you can as you can see here, where I'm pouring water into a cup, the more water I have, the darker it becomes. Each material and liquid absorbs light by a different amount for each wavelength, and this leads to the darkening of wet surfaces. We derive a unified model for this phenomena from the ground up accounting for light scattering and absorption by the material and the liquid. In summary, the spectral appearance of a single surface point is the, is the dry color value I0 scaled by the summation over n bounces of the multiplication of three terms. Alpha, which encodes the ratio of light returning to the surface after n times scattering. P, a phase function which encodes the four center scattering for wet surfaces and increased light absorption by the material and liquid due to the longer path length. 
We derive this model based on general mild assumptions, like perpendicular incident light on the homogeneous material surface. We extend the single surface point case to the much spectral surface appearance, W, of K wavelengths and M pixels. Tensor A encodes the spectral absorption by the dry material. Tensor B encodes the same for the spilled liquid. We assume that the type of liquid is known, so we know its spectral absorption coefficient from which we can pre-compute it but its spatial distribution across M is dependent on the unknown wetness. T encodes the relative energy of n bounds multi-scatter life for each of my M pixels. We solve for the unknowns by alternating on the minimization of the difference between the predicted and observed appearance on tensor A and matrix T. Here we show real examples with spilled wine and water. The top row shows input images with wet and dry parts. You can see that the recovered special wetness and original dry colors are well estimated. Our algorithm works well even with two colors. For instance, at this hard region, it is even hard for us to see which part is wet, but our method nicely recovers the wet across wet areas, across the surface regardless of the underlying colors. We can handle different leakage and different surface colors. As you can see, the estimated spatial wetness much why we would expect. As you can imagine, quantitative evaluation is challenging because there is no straightforward means to measure surface wetness. As a proxy ground truth wetness, we measure the water weight as the difference between wet and dry surface weights. This was done for various materials. As you can see in this graph, the recovered wetness is linearly correlated with the water weight, which shows the accuracy of our method. In conclusion, we derive a new model and solution for recovering spatial wetness and the dry color from a single multispectral image. Its effectiveness should be useful for visual analysis of surface conditions. Thank you. We have time maybe for a quick question. Uh, how, how many spectral samples did you need, and could you like use a smartphone to do this analysis? Oh. In this, in our experiments, we use much spectral and uh, many one hundred webs, but but we. We already we have already tried a uh, six band is enable estimation enable our estimation. Okay. We have one more quick question. 